Greetings, my name is Sean Felton, and I am Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Cornell University. Thank you for joining me and many of our students at Cornell for this special session, um, talking about what it's like to be an ROTC student at Cornell University. Pleased that you guys were all able to join. You're busy folks, you have classes. Um, some of you have to get to classes and some of you are just coming out of classes. And we certainly thank you for your time um, hopefully this, this video will be helpful to students that are thinking about ROTC and thinking about Cornell. And we're going to try to sort of provide a little bit of detail about what it's like to combine those two experiences into one. Um, before we get started, though, I'd like to ask each of you to do introductions. And if you wouldn't mind sharing your year at Cornell, what you're majoring in, and your um, hometown, um, city and state, um, and more if, 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 if that is the case for you. And I want us to start with Isaac, who is, who is a member of Army ROTC. Yes, sir, my name is Isaac McCurdy. I'm a cadet in uh, Cornell Army ROTC. I'm a senior class of 2021, studying China and Asia Pacific studies in the College of Arts and Sciences. And I am from Sterling, Virginia. Hey, I'm Shane Lobo. I'm a senior in the College of Engineering, studying engineering physics and I'm in our Air Force ROTC. And then um, my hometown is Clearwater, Florida. Hi, my name is Claudia and I'm a sophomore in the College of Engineering. I'm studying engineering physics and mechanical engineering. So I'll be graduating with the class of 2024. And I'm from Randolph, New Jersey. I'm an Air Force ROTC. And then our largest group, our largest uh, cohort from the uh, Navy Marine ROTC branch here at Cornell, um, Colby, Natalia, and Amy, would you mind introducing yourselves? And uh, Natalia, why don't we start with you? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Natalia Urbis. I am a sophomore studying material science and engineering, and my hometown is Berkeley, California. Good afternoon. My name is Colby Ballone. I'm a sophomore studying environmental engineering in CALS, and I'm from Reading, Connecticut. Hello everyone, my name is Amy Friedenberg. I'm a senior in uh, the College of Industrial Labor Relations. I'm class of 2021 and I'm from Canton, Connecticut. Wow. And I'm also a, a Marine option in the Navy ROTC program. Oh, that's great. That's great. What a great group. Thank you guys again for, for, for being here and for sparing the time. You're very busy. You're extremely busy because not only are you Cornell students, you are ROTC students at Cornell. And before we get started, I want to ask a question. So in the Navy Marine branch of things, you all have designations. I don't really fully understand them, but maybe if you can tell me what are your designations? I know, um, you know, Amy, you're a senior and then Natalia and, and Colby are sophomores. What are your designations, um, your sort of ranks and what, just to give us a sense of, of this? Sure, I could start off um, just to give a frame of reference. We use the term midshipman, which is the equivalent title as cadet. Um, cadet is what they use in uh, Army and Air Force ROTC. So we just okay. use midshipman. Um, that's going back to the Naval Academy days when, um, well, that's where the name started because you're in, in the between of your training and you're about to go out into the fleet, but you're not there yet. So the term is midshipman and uh, MIDN is the abbreviation. Um, but the way we designate per grade, you actually start as a fourth class. So a four slash C, it just means fourth class is equivalent to your first year at Cornell as um, in Navy, Navy ROTC. And then you'd be a third class as a sophomore, then a second class, and then a first class. So um, it just goes up that way. That's great, Amy, thank you. Hey, Isaac, um, would you mind talking a little bit about cadets and how that works? You can speak to the cadet side of, of things. Sure, no problem. Yes, we're all called cadets. Uh, we have similar designations for class level, um, sort of inverted from what Navy has. So it's the abbreviation is MS, which stands for military science. So a freshman is MS1, MS2, MS3, MS4, um, basically just based on your, uh, your class year. Um, we also have the difference between contracted and non-contracted. So to contract as a cadet, you have to pass your medical review board, you have to pass your physical fitness test, and um, fill out the required paperwork. Um, so we have some cadets in our program who aren't contracted yet, and then the goal is to become contract, and that's how you formally begin the process of 
participating in ROTC with the end goal of, of joining the army. That's great. And does that, and Shane, I'm gonna go to you next actually. Um, you, you, you can let us know if there are any further distinctions with the Connect rank designation for ROTC students and you're gonna get us started off. I wanna hear from you what it's like being a Cornell student. Sure, so um, there actually isn't, uh, Army and us both use the cadet um, ranking, so there's not much differences between that. Um, but to answer your question about what it's like to be a Cornell student, um, it's, it's, a, it's an adventure, I guess. There's a, there's a lot of difference from high school um, to the college environment. You have a lot more freedom to really explore, especially on this campus. There's, there's so many different uh, places to go and things to see and um, different types of people to meet. So um, I guess it just means to explore for me. Uh, Amy, I'm back to you really fast. Um, and and you, you and, and Shane are both seniors. Anybody else a senior? No, okay. So, Amy, oh yes, Isaac, you're a senior too. Okay, excellent. And uh, Isaac, actually I'll come to you as, after, we, after I'm going to Amy first. Um, what has been most challenging for you knowing that ROTC is challenging. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but what's been most challenging for you regarding your Cornell student experience? So I've definitely had a very positive experience. I really enjoy being involved in so many different areas of the campus, but I'd say the most challenging thing is for me to figure out what to prioritize when, um, when I have many different in, uh, time investments where I have different club meetings to go to. I have to really decide what things to skip that week because of my schoolwork or I have to decide what things are worthwhile putting my time into. Um, so I have really had to think about that critically and figure out um, what organizations I want to continue on with. Like all four years, say I joined something freshman year if I want to continue doing it each year. Um, but I've really loved the chance to be part of so many different clubs on campus in addition to ROTC and have um, my job as an RA and different things that take up a lot of time but are definitely worth it. So definitely prioritization and time management is something I've learned throughout the, these past three years and this is into my fourth year. That's great. What about you, Isaac? What, ha what has been challenging um, about your experience as a Cornell student? Uh, one challenge is, is, it's actually a good thing. Um, being at Cornell has really opened my eyes to how huge the world is and how many opportunities there are. So even just semester to semester, I've had to make tough choices between different classes that I wanna take and things I wanna do that I really, I would just love all of them. Uh, even this last semester, you know, I'm studying China and Asia Pacific studies and I had to choose between you know two different Asian culture classes um, that I really wanted to take um, and I could only fit one in um, and that's you know continue with ROTC as well you know with uh, in the army we have the option to request to be active duty reserve duty or national guard and along with the things you can do with a Cornell degree it's the, the possibilities are just so endless that it's there's been a lot of a lot of thought put into what I want to do afterwards as, long, as well as what I want to do, you know, each and every semester. That's great, that's great. My next question is actually for uh, Colby and Claudia, and Claudia, we'll have you go first. What is it like being a Cornell student who is a part of ROTC? Well, I have found the whole experience to be incredibly rewarding. You get the experience of being in two separate worlds and part of two communities that have come together through ROTC. So I'm definitely involved on campus, but also being involved in military activities through ROTC has shown me a different perspective. So it's very cool to interact with people on campus and have them find out that you're in ROTC because you get that joint experience of being part of those two worlds. That's great, that's great. And Colby, what about you? Well, first and foremost, it's truly an honor to be part of a unit with such a rich military history. And you end up noticing a lot of ways in which your training and experience in one will carry over to the other. And those experiences are really rewarding and, and really amazing when those two worlds overlap and you find yourself using the skills almost interchangeably. And it's, it's really cool. And it's part of what makes it great. That's great. Natalia. How do students that are not a part of ROTC respond to you 
when they learn or know or see that you are a part of ROTC? What has your experience been like? I think typically there's a lot of respect. Um, people appreciate that it involves a sort of time commitment and a sort of balance with academics. That's certainly a challenge and people are impressed that I do it. Um, also, usually a little bit of surprise um, <laughs> because especially like when we're in uniform for the day, I carry myself differently and they, um, people, people are a little surprised to see us be able to switch between those two worlds as easily as I try to and, it, and typically I'm able to. That's, that's really interesting. Um, what about you, Amy? What, what, have, what have you sort of seen, you're a senior, you know, you've been here a little longer, um, and what have you seen in terms of response to your involvement and maybe even the change in terms of people knowing about ROTC and sort of understanding more of it because they know you and you've, you've been a part of the, the organization? Yes, so I've definitely put it out there that I'm part of ROTC and all the different organizations I'm in. For example, um, it's something that everyone talks about for, in my sorority. They'll use me almost as like a selling point to have other people join. They're like, we have this, <laughs> this girl who's in ROTC and she's so strong. And I don't know why they think I'm strong, but um, they've never actually seen me like work out or, or anything like in that setting, in my sorority setting, but um, just they equate those things. And then also um, just walking around on campus in my uniform, I'll have people come up to me and shake my hand and say, thank you for your service, which is um, such like a great thing that they're showing the respect, but um, it's interesting the way we have, we respond because we actually haven't served time yet. We are just in this training program here. Um, so I thank them for their support in general, but then um, just kind of go on with my day and um, remember that that happened. But other times people will come up and ask me how I managed to do all these different things, or they ask me why am I wearing my uniform, and I just explain um, that we wear it almost as a, a tradition and to um, have some sort of discipline in our unit so we learn how to wear the uniform correctly and we only do it once a week instead of every day so we can also blend into the college life as well. Uh, so I've gotten a, a wide range of questions throughout the years. <laughs> and see, I see that from two sides. Your sorority is using ROTC to recruit and then ROTC is getting the benefit of your sorority in terms of <laughs> recruiting. So that's really great. Isaac, um, we heard a little bit about how camping is the way that Major Swab um, really kind of starts conversations with students who indicate um, interest in Army ROTC. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what he's getting at in terms of camping and the outdoors and how that's been a part of your, your Army ROTC experience at Cornell thus far. Sure, I think I can, although take a lifetime to understand his methods. He's got a lot of experience. Um, but I think for some people, so um, it's a good way to sort of level the playing field in some ways, because whether you have a lot of camping experience, like I did growing up with uh, as a Boy Scout or no camping experience at all, camping in an ROTC context or an Army context, um, there are going to be a lot of things that you don't know and a lot of things you have to learn in terms of techniques and in terms of missions you're trying to accomplish. And so it puts you in a situation where you're not entirely sure what to expect. You know, you're not in the comfort of, of your own room, your bed. Um, and so that kind of opens up your mind to be taught. And so often, I remember during our pre-orientation freshman year, um, you know, we were all out in the woods, a um, little colder than most of us were used to because we're so far north. And, you know, Mr. Swab would come around and just start kind of talking to us and teaching us some basic things. Um, and a lot of us kind of laughed at the very beginning. He called the, you know, some of the things he said swabisms. Um, but some of the things he said have really stuck with me, you know, just like short pithy things like um, uh, a, sh a short pen is, is better than a long memory. And so one of the things I think is that it really, it really does open your mind to be taught when you're in a situation like that. And another one is, you know, it is the army. So not everyone's going to be, you know, doing field training and camping all the time, but it is a necessary skill that everyone in the army does have to have. Um, so there's both the practical side to it and the uh, teaching side to it, I think. That's great. Claudia, during your introduction, I think I heard you say that you're doing two majors in the College of Engineering and that it sounds like you may be staying a little while longer to get both of them done. Is that correct? Um, 
Well, congratulations. Sounds like a lot of really awesome hard work. How are you going to manage it? <laughs> Tell us about time management. So you're an ROTC and a Cornell student doing a double major in the College of Engineering. Let us, let us into any secrets that you've, you have or any plans you have to sort of just to manage what is certainly a heavy lift, I would say. <laughs> I would agree with that. In addition to that, I'm also on a project team, so that's even more work. Wow, wow. It's, it's amazing, I, I would say that, and I know all of you are doing a lot of different things. I think, you, Amy, you may be the first ROTC student that I've encountered in my time here at Cornell that is a part of a sorority or fraternity, at least that I was aware of. Um, so you guys are all doing lots of different things and, and really sort of really sort of focused um, in, in all the areas that a student at Cornell would be and should be. Is managing your time, though, is that something that takes practice? And, and I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Shane and Natalia to talk about this from two different perspectives. Shane, um, being a senior, has probably had to sort of to think about this a little bit more and has had longer to do so. Shane, how have you had to manage your time? How have you done that? Sure. So um, I think RTC actually prepares you pretty well to manage your time, um, especially at a college like Cornell, where there's so many things to do and so many assignments and prelims. Um, just having to wake up early and um, enforce that discipline in you, that integrity, um, I think that really trains you to be productive, um, to make the most of your time, because you kind of have to. There's a lot of assignments, especially in engineering, and there's a lot to do in the Air Force ROTC, especially. So um, it kind of trains you to, to be prepared to encounter a lot of obstacles, which is nice. And what about you, Natalia? What have you, what have you learned in your, your first two years in terms of managing your time and all the things that you want to do and that you need to do and have to do as part of being an ROTC Cornell student? Yeah, um, I think that in many ways, ROTC provides a contrast for my academics that both helps me manage my time and is really good for my mental health. For example, last year I was on the drill team, um, it mandatory for freshman first semester and optional second semester, but almost my whole, my whole year of ROTC students chose to do it because it's a really welcome break. This is just an example of one of the many ways in which ROTC does that, but with drill, you in many ways, turn your brain off. You follow the commands, you march in time, and to go from like five hours on an engineering problem set and then go march around for an hour felt not like another thing I had to do, but a welcome break. And that applies to, to many other parts of our ROTC, including workouts and classes that ask us to think in different ways about different things. That's great, that's great. Isaac, I'm curious, um, you know, you're a senior and you're, you're doing some really, really cool stuff. China and Asia, Asia Pacific Studies major in the College of Arts and Sciences. How has ROTC changed you? Um, a big thing for me is it's helped me strengthen my weak spots. Uh, so you can ask anyone who knew me growing up or, you know, my first few years at here at Cornell, I'm one of the, I'm so bad at organization and time management and things like that. And so, um, Seniors all serve positions in the battalion staff. So that means we're sort of running the things behind the scenes uh, with the guidance of the, uh, the professional uh, army cadre as well. And so the position I was given was the supply officer position, which means I'm in charge of all the logistics and management and things I'm really bad at doing. Um, and so I was a little bit intimidated by it at first, but it's given me an excellent opportunity to, uh, you know, work at the thing I'm weakest at and turn my, my weakness into one of my strengths. Um, in addition, it's given me the opportunity to um, look at ways that I can usefully apply what I'm learning academically in um, a very applicable um, real world context. Um, so I'm studying China and Asia Pacific studies and one of the things I've chosen to focus on a lot during the past semester and a half or so is uh, Korea and I've become more and more interested in um, the Korean War and sort of the, the legacy of that. And so we're obviously very, the U.S. Army and U.S. military in general is very involved in, you know, politics in East Asia and in 
um, you know, the Korean Peninsula specifically. And so I'm hoping to be able to like use what I've learned academically in the professional context in the military and then whether I stay or whether I, you know, do something else, uh, you know, whether it's politically or foreign relations or something like that afterwards, um, hopefully, you know, be able to do some, some good and combine everything I've learned. That's super interesting. Uh, Colby, uh, you're a sophomore, so I'm going to change the, the verb for you, but it's the same question. How is ROTC changing you? It's definitely changed my perspective on a variety of things down to just how I carry myself to how I see the world in general. It's definitely been a positive experience and I'm beyond grateful for what it's given me. Um, just the simple act of wearing a uniform makes me rethink how I want to represent not just myself, not just my family, not just my school, but the US Navy. And that's a big responsibility to be a positive image for that, but it's an honor to be able to do that. And in that sense, I think it's changed me for the better. That's great. Claudia, what about you? So one of the things that we really stress in Air Force ROTC is the concept of wingmanship. The idea that you are part of a community and you should learn how to be a good wingman to your fellow wingmen and how they can be a good wingman to you. So that's really put me in the mindset of what are my goals and how can I achieve them? But also, what are my friends' goals? What are my community's goals? And together, how can we build each other up and how can we support each other? So it's very community-minded and it helps me focus on both what I wanna do and also how I can help other people get to their goals. That's great, thank you. That's really great to hear, um, especially the community piece. And speaking of communities, I wanna sort of ask you guys a question and I'm going to have you respond in sort of ROTC branch groups, if you will. I want to know what it's like to be, we're going to start with Army first, just in case, um, but um, I just want to know what it's like to be you, Isaac, in our Army ROTC. What is it like? Are there certain days that things are happening that are, you know, that are different than other days. Give us a, just sort of a, a, a kind of a snapshot of what it's like to be you as a member of Army ROTC and so that we get a sense of what that experience is like and how it might be a little different than the others. Sure thing, so I'll give, a, I'll give an example of a pre-COVID day and a, and a during COVID day, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. So pre-COVID, let's say Monday, um, I would, you know, start working on making sure I have all the homework for, for Monday finished on Sunday night because I know that, you know, I can't stay up too late on Sunday night because we have physical training PT the next morning. Um, I'm usually sort of an early riser. I like to let my body wake up before we have our morning workout. So we start at 6.15, but I prefer to, you know, get up at 5.30 or so, um, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, ride there with a friend. We work out in or around Barton Hall. Um, so sometimes it's an outdoor run or you know outdoor workout at the track. Um, other times it'll, especially once it gets cold, it'll be an indoor workout that ends at 7:15. And then I usually go take a shower, get breakfast, and then I head off to do classes for the day. Um, once classes are over, you know it's usually three or four or something like that for me on uh, a normal year. I would you know go do a workout and then go get dinner and do any homework in the evening. During COVID, it's been a little different. Um, not too much different, but there have been, been some differences. The process for, you know, finishing up homework the night before is still the same. Uh, our workouts are still the same, but they're all outdoors now and they're in smaller groups. We've broken into like three separate groups of about 20 each uh, just for mitigation and all of our workouts are outdoors, you know, distance so that we're, we're taking safety precautions. And then same thing, coming home, showering, uh, getting breakfast at the dining hall. And then for me this year, all my classes are online except for my ROTC classes. Um, so that'll just be a day of classes. And then, yeah, the process is pretty similar. Just the location's the difference, I suppose. Oh, interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Shane and Claudia, what's it like to be in Air Force ROTC? What's, what's, the, week, what's the week like? What, what are the days like where you are doing things that are very significant and designate that you're a part of ROTC, Air Force ROTC here at Cornell? Sure. So um, Monday morning, just like Army, we have PT in the morning usually before COVID. 
Um, we wake up around 5.30 and get to Barton Hall around 6 or 6.30, depending on the year. Um, and then we wear our uniforms um, every Monday, actually, um, to our, all our classes. We call it a uniform wear day. Um, we do the same on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we also have PT. But um, before that, um, we have an entire day of class and lab, which is from around um, noon to 5.30. So it's a, a very long day of RTC on Thursdays for us. And then we end that up with PT afterwards. Um, we start off with like um, our individual years classes. So our freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year classes. And then after that, we have a lab sort of where we incorporate activities that um, train leadership, followership, and communication um, in a two hour, three hour lab after that. Wow. And Claudia, um, anything to add to that? And, and I do have a very specific question for you. <laughs> I'm not worried about you, but I'm just sort of wondering, like, so are you, are you having to take more classes even now to move through the double major that you've, that you've um, committed to along with all that Shane has just mentioned? Um, what's it like? What's it like for you? So for me, it definitely is all about time management. The good thing is that I love everything I'm doing. Problem sets are sometimes not the most fun to get through, but it's the end goal, really. So I enjoy everything. I live through my calendar. I have time blocked out for everything that I need to do. And moving through the day really is one thing after another, but finding time for self-care and leisure in the meantime. ROTC really does feel like self-care, so I'll agree with what Natalia said about that. I love everything I do, and it does feel like a break from academics. Hmm. That's great. That's great. And then finally, um, Amy, Colby, and Natalia, um, a little bit about your experience. And I think if I, if just, if, my, if memory serves, Amy, you're doing the Marine option. Is that correct? Okay, excellent. I think you may be one of the few, maybe the first student that I've in, that I've encountered at Cornell doing the Marine option of, of Navy um, ROTC, which is really fantastic. So I'd be curious to hear if there are any differences for you in terms of your experience of ROTC versus what uh, Colby and Natalia are doing um, in ROTC, all of you guys being a part of the Navy ROTC, Navy Marine ROTC here at Cornell. Anyone can go first. <laughs> sure, I can talk a little bit about the differences, but I'll let them cover more of the Navy specific things. I'd say the big difference with being Marine option is one, I don't have to take any of the technical courses at Cornell, like in Navy, they have to take um, calculus and physics. So I actually don't have to take any of that because the Marine Corps does not um, need any of that. It doesn't require you to have that, but you can totally take those on your own if you'd like. And then, um, but instead, we have an extra day or two of PT in the morning. Um, so there's a trade-off where I'll definitely be doing more required physical fitness um, because there is a school called Officer Candidate School um, in, that you go to the summer of between your junior and senior summer, um, between your junior and senior year. So I went to that this summer. It was a little bit different than usual. We had two days of quarantine there in Quantico, Virginia, and then um, it was five weeks of the training. And then once I graduated, from there, then I'm on the right track to continue on to commission in the Marine Corps. Um, so you have to complete that. And it's very physical. So they really try to prepare the Marine options well for that specific school ahead of time. So we have um, more PT days. We have uh, Marine option PT days, but they're actually open to um, all midshipmen. So some Navy option midshipmen will join as well. Um, but those would probably be um, back my freshman, sophomore year, it was Marine option PT, Tuesday and Thursday mornings, and then Navy option PT Wednesday mornings. Um, but it switches around each year what morning is which day. Um, so it's just whatever it is that year. But unfortunately, right now, um, we are not allowed to have any required events at all in person. So um, particularly PT. So I know Army is able to work out. I think they're able to get around that because their class is designated as a PE course through Cornell. So anyone can sign up through the PE course and those are still operating, but ours are not PE courses. So we're not allowed to have our organization gather right now um, in such a large group. So sadly, we've just been running on our own and um, hoping everyone's staying fit. <laughs> That's great. Just sign up for PT and come work out with us. 
<laughs> uh, Colby and Natalia, a little bit about uh, what it's like to be, you know, in Navy ROTC and sort of a day in the life, a week in the life, moments that are really, you know, sort of definitive of the, the Navy ROTC experience. And uh, Natalia, go first, yeah. So Wednesdays are probably the most definitive day because we're in uniform, but I'll actually leave that to um, Midshipman Balone to Colby to um, talk about a little bit. I'd love to jump on about PT and what PT is like in our unit, as well as academics and classes. Um, first of all, I think that it's worth mentioning that PT is a major way that we team building get to know each other. Um, a lot of people choose to go to optional PTs. It was certainly um, a habit of mine when I could make it happen last semester. Um, and it's a really good way to connect with everyone and get to know the upperclassmen. They're wonderful resources for both ROTC help and Cornell help. Um, so that was certainly a big part of my motivation. Um, we also have classes. Um, so currently the sophomores are lucky enough to have class in person and it's one of my favorite parts of my week. Um, you know, we all meet up, it's an early morning class, 7 a.m. And we get to chat about leadership and what it means to be a leader for an hour and a little bit. And then I get breakfast with my classmates who are some of my best friends. And, you know, it's 8.30 or 9 a.m. and I'm already up and awake and ready to start my day. So that's certainly a big part of the ROTC experience for me is the early mornings and time to connect with my classmates. That those things are what make me feel set up to take on whatever comes up next. I'll let Midshipman Balone talk about um, Wednesdays and what that means. Yeah, so I've always wondered how long you have to follow me to figure out I was in ROTC. I'd imagine it's around 10 minutes because it's something that I'm very passionate about. So I spend a lot of my free time, even when I don't have to, just working on my uniform, shining shoes, uh, reading the textbook for fun for our Naval Science class. But the highlight of my week, um, maybe ROTC wise, would be our drill labs and those are really amazing um i wish you know everyone would be able to experience it especially our freshmen back when um, we were in the middle of a pandemic but those are labs that cover anything from a uniform inspection or an award ceremony to having a guest speaker come like the committing officer of a, of a submarine and those are really rewarding and they're really awesome experiences and that's where we get a lot of our training done um, if you follow the Cornell and ROTC Instagram on the story they put clips of our drill labs and you can see what we do there. And uh, it's really special. So those are awesome times. But pre-COVID, um, we would have also been doing PTs like I've been mentioned in the morning. And then if you're on the drill team, you go do drill practice. And that was among my favorite things. And then the really cool experience was being able to be on the color guard and go to hockey games and football games and carry out the flag for the national anthem and that was really awesome that was one of my favorite things that's great that's great so i'm curious um to know how you all learned about cornell um so we'll we'll let you just think about being a cornell student for a little bit um although rotc and cornell are inseparable for all of you and and for good reason and um, and I think you're, you're all sort of more amazing for that, honestly. But how did you learn about Cornell? Like, when did the possibility of being here, studying here, being a student here, when did that when did that you know come about? Isaac, well, I'd love to hear your response to this. Um, so I found out about Cornell. I was uh, doing a gap year over in China with the National Security Language Initiative for Youth, and so I was basically just looking for programs. Um, that would be a good way to combine Chinese traditional Asian studies and like modern Asian political studies. And I was particularly looking at Ivy League schools and there wasn't any other school that had China and Asia Pacific studies. And so I decided, you know, let's apply here because it's the most unique one I could find. That's great. All right, and thank you, sir. I've got to head out for a, a, a class meeting now. Um, but Thank you, Isaac. Thank you very much. Uh, go Big Red, go Army. <laughs> All right. Natalia, I'd love to hear your, your response to this question. Absolutely. I think I was, um, I would say, lucky enough to stumble into it. Um, I was certainly looking for somewhere where I could participate in ROTC. Um, and 
because of the history at Cornell, I also hadn't picked a branch yet personally as I applied to schools. So the fact that I had the opportunity to participate in any branch I wanted here certainly um, drew me to Cornell. In terms of non-ROTC things, um, I was looking for a school where I could study engineering. Um, specifically, I was at the time and still am interested in um, I guess certain applications, I was interested a lot in um, water and water processing hmm. and at Cornell has a lot of great programs for that. Um, and I knew I wanted to be involved in research. So knowing that there was an, um, I don't know what the percentage is, but a huge number of Cornell students do research. Yeah. And I actually just started with my research group about a month ago and it's been everything I hoped it would be. Um, I didn't end up researching with water, which is why I say I stumbled into it. Um, one of the major things that drew me here isn't what I've been involved in, but I'm still very lucky to get to work with an amazing postdoc who I'm learning a lot from every day. That's great, that's great. What about you, Amy? How did you, how did Cornell, and how did the ILR school? Um, that makes you kind of unique amongst the group here, for sure. Um, there, are, there are other ILR students, but amongst this small group, you are, uh, you are the, the one. Definitely, it actually all comes together. Um, I was looking at colleges and getting a ton of mail, um, like so much mail to my house and was <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed with all of it and didn't know what college I wanted to go to. This was throughout, like between my junior year in high school to senior year, so that summer and then the beginning of senior year, I really had no idea if I wanted a big school or a small school. And I went on a lot, a lot of college tours um, with my parents and really just was like, wow, I, I like all of these schools. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna decide. And so I also knew that I was really interested in a wide variety of like disciplines within um, either liberal, liberal arts and human rights and um, the law and I wasn't sure if I wanted to choose just one specific route and so I got a postcard in the mail from Cornell ILR and it just said ILR and I'd never heard of the acronym before and it said any person oh no it said one major endless possibilities yes so um, I saw that and then there was all these little words around and it said social justice and human rights and law and HR and all these things I was like I'll take all all 50 of these different options um, if it's all in one major so immediately I looked it up and my dad got all excited and was like you have to we have to take a trip to Cornell like it's such a beautiful place so um, we came went on a tour and I really loved the ILR school and their whole presentation of what the school is going to be like and how small it was so I was coming from a really small high school of 80 people and I knew that this would be a shock um, obviously of having a school of 14,000 people but the fact that the ILR school is so small and my classes would be about maybe 20 um that really was appealing to me and at the time i was thinking of doing rotc because i um knew as a senior i didn't want to have like a desk job in the future and just be part of like going to work and having an office i wanted to have more adventure and like challenge in my life and i wanted to um physically push myself but also like develop my leadership skills as well before i went into more of um a regular profession, I guess you'd say. So I knew I wanted to step outside the box in that way. So I knew of ROTC because my father did ROTC and he was a Marine um, as well. So it's something that was always in the back of my head, but it wasn't until my senior year of high school that I actually was like, oh, all these things fit together. I might as well give it a try. Um, but it actually took a few tries to get into Cornell. <laughs> I applied ED and then got uh, deferred and then I got waitlisted and then I got a call on May 1st and was told I have a spot waiting for me as like right off the waitlist um, and immediately I took it. So um, it, for all of those out there who are thinking of applying and might get discouraged, definitely keep with it because it'll all work out and um, hopefully and you just have to keep pushing and if it's meant to be, it'll work out. That's a great. Thank you for that story of, you know, like, hold on, don't worry so much. Things will happen as they're supposed to. Shane, um, what about you? How did Cornell come up, happen? How did you, how did we meet? <laughs> sure. Um, so actually, I was going to um, join the Marine Corps out of high school. Um, I really wanted to serve my country and felt a strong need to be part of the military. But then um, I saw the movie The Martian. 
um, which talked oh. about an, uh, yeah. an astronaut. And I kind of got really interested about like space exploration and being an astronaut. So um, I looked up how to become an astronaut. And it turns out a lot of people that are astronauts come from an Air Force or Navy background, and a lot of them are pilots. So then I started looking up how to become a pilot, and it led me to RTC here. Um, and then, oh, well, RTC in general. And then the reason I chose Cornell is because um, I got a research scholarship to go here called the Rawlings, the Rawlings Research Scholarship. And I also came here on diversity hosting. So I got to fly up here and meet some of the students here. And so that was the main reason why I chose RTC at Cornell. Wow, that's great. And you just transitioned into my other question for Colby um, and Claudia. How did you how did you hear about learn about ROTC, and how did you make contact with ROTC at Cornell? And uh, Claudia, why don't we start with you? Actually, so growing up, I assumed that ROTC wasn't for me. I was born in Poland. My entire family is Polish, and we have no military connections. But my friend tried out for an Army ROTC scholarship senior year of high school, and I started talking to her about it. And I started researching the different branches and the Air Force and the possibilities that I had for the future. And I tried out for the Air Force ROTC scholarship and ended up getting it. So I was still a little bit hesitant because I hadn't thought about it all that much when I applied for the scholarship. But doing more research, showing up to the detachment, meeting people, and exploring the possibilities that are now available to me. I definitely made the right decision. I somehow stumbled into this, but I would not have it any other way. ROTC is incredible, has grown me as a person, and it's very much what I want to do. So I got really, really lucky. My friend actually quit Army ROTC, so I'm here now. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And Colby, what about you? How did how did how did you meet ROTC? How did ROTC find you? So my story is very much tied, at least at the beginning, to my older brothers. Uh, both of us always wanted to join the military, and we were looking at the maritime branches, being the Coast Guard and the Navy. So that was that was our goal since we were very young. Um, and then my brother, he would go and visit the maritime academies, like Maine Maritime, Mass Maritime, and I would go with them. And the more uniforms I saw, the more ships I saw, the more people I spoke to, I wanted it more and more. And he ended up going to the Coast Guard Academy. He's there as a senior. And then I was given the decision, um, luckily enough, to go either go there or go come here and do ROTC. And that's kind of where our paths diverged. And, you know, our stories started together, ended up in different places, but we both couldn't be happier. Um, and it's been an amazing journey ever since the start. That's great, that's great. So I have some fun questions for you guys, um, if you'll indulge me. And um, we're gonna start with you, Amy, um, and then I will guide us around, but I'm curious to know, what is your favorite class? And Amy, we'll start with you. What is your favorite class that you're in right now? Or it could be a class you've taken you know, previously, you could, some of you have been here a little while, so. I'd say right now, my favorite class is um, a class in the ILR school that's um, upper level uh, human, um, I guess I would call it, a, it's in the labor relations division, but it's a lot of talking about human rights. So it's called values and rights and justice at work. And it's a very small class uh, with Professor Gross and it has uh, seven people in it total and it's on Zoom right now and I actually took his course on workers rights as human rights uh, last fall and so I really enjoyed that course so much I decided to take this one which is the next level up talking about values in the workplace and I just really enjoyed talking about it because or the class in general because it um, not only is talking about the workplace we're more talking about human values the right to um, have human rights and how that might intersect into the workplace and how first you have to understand our human condi condition and then um, bring that understanding and empathy and um, those values into the workplace in order to have an equitable um, living, working conditions in uh, a safe environment and everything. So it really brings it all together. It's almost like a capstone senior ILR 
class that's like your dream ILR class because it's everything that ILR tries to be. So um, I really enjoyed that class. That's great. And Amy, do you guys do a lot of writing and presenting in the ILR school? We do a lot of writing, so I'm very proficient in <laughs> essay writing, I would say, um, as far as getting essays done um, on a tight timeline. I really enjoy writing. That's something I've been doing ever since high school. I always loved writing. Um, but I wouldn't say we present very often because it's okay. less of like projects that we're present, less projects that we're doing, um, more so analyzing text or doing big research projects that end up being a 40 page paper, um, but less uh, presenting. I do present much more often in ROTC actually. I present um, for my uh, classes in leadership management and then also my more Marine Corps specific classes called Maneuver Warfare and Evolution of Warfare. We present different um, tactics looking at past battles or um, just different leadership conundrums. Uh, so I've definitely learned my presenting skills and PowerPoint uh, expertise from that more so than ILR. That's great. Uh, Colby, we're going to go to you. Um, tell me your favorite Cornell class. And after Amy's response, I'm going to change the question. So favorite Cornell class and your favorite or one of your ROTC classes that you, that you really enjoy. So I would say that my favorite Cornell class that I'm taking right now uh, is Math 2930, Differential Equations for Engineers. Um, I like that class a lot just because I like numbers because they're not very subjective. Uh, I always found writing hard because it was a very opinionated, but with numbers, two plus two is four. And to me, that kind of is a lot less complicated. <laughs> so it's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, and then what about the uh, ROTC class that, uh, that you really enjoy or that's interesting or challenging or just sort of unique? Well, the one, uh, the Naval Science class that I'm taking right now, Leadership and Management, has been very unique in terms of any class I've ever taken. It's one that is less focused on memorizing facts or crunching numbers and more along the lines of talking about life experiences and how you would approach certain situations. Um, how you would manage a team, how you would lead a team, and how you would even be a good follower at the same time. But every naval science class I've taken will always rank high up on my favorites. Uh, naval history was an, was an awesome class. Um, uh, they're, all, they're all great. Yeah, they haven't missed yet. Oh, that's great. That's great. Natalia, how about you? Favorite Cornell class and favorite uh, ROTC class? I think it's hard for me to pick one favorite Cornell class, but I can certainly give one of my favorites. Um, it's Engineering Introduction. It's ENGRI 1140. Um, it's called Materials, the Future of Energy. It is what made me decide to major in material science. I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of the whole field of study coming in. Um, and the class really introduced me to, um, to how engineering can really change the world and its importance, but also uh, material science is a blend of chemistry and physics that really appealed to me. Um, so I absolutely, it's also what ultimately got me interested in the research I'm doing now. We're looking for um, studying the reactions that will be used in fuel cells, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, definitely a strong energy application of materials research. Um, I would strongly recommend for all engineers, regardless of what you're studying, there are no prereqs for it and it's a lot of fun. Um, my favorite naval science class would also have to be leadership and management, just like Colby's. Um, I am usually a big fan of the not subjective classes, but this course has really given me an opportunity to um, challenge my views about what it means to be a leader and to talk with my class, to have really like serious discussions with my classmates about who are we now and who do we want to become and being able to reference that off of research instead of it being a completely up in the air topic is really nice. We can look at here is what the research says. Here is where we are. Um, how do we understand and relate to this and how do we use this to be the best military and life leaders we can be. That's great. Shane, how about you? Favorite Cornell class, favorite um, ROTC class? 
Yeah, um, Physics 1204 um, by Dr. Selby, which um, I took last spring, was my definitely my favorite class. It really touches on the creative aspect of physics and engineering and um, like how it relates to musical instruments and sound, which is something I'm really interested about. Um, as for my favorite ROTC class, it's um, probably the one I'm taking right now, AIRS 4401. It kind of touches on like the national security and current events going or going along um, right now in our administration and the global world and kind of prepares us for what um, a lot of us are going to encounter in just like just under a year's time from now. So mm. it's very interesting. That's great. That's great. And Claudia. <laughs> So my favorite class at Cornell is without a doubt, Introduction to Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. I took it last semester and I was thrown at a bunch of words that I didn't know were thrown at me all at once. Words like quantum dots and nanoscience and optics. And I did more research into it and I found that I really, really enjoyed the class and the subject matter. It's taught by Professor Lambert and he's a fantastic lecturer. And that course inspired me to pick up the engineering physics major. So it definitely made a huge impact on me. As for ROTC, the course I'm taking right now is have some, it's centered around leadership fundamentals. So we learn how to be good leaders, but also good followers. It's very introspective, which I didn't expect from the course. So I'm learning about my own strengths, my weaknesses, and who I am as a person, which is really interesting to have in a classroom environment. And I think it'll help me a lot in the long run for personal development. That's great. I would love for us to spend even more time talking because you guys are so interesting and you make me want to sort of go back in time and do it all over again and apply to Cornell and be a part of ROTC. Um, but that can't happen and you guys do have other things that you need to do and I, I just want to wrap up first off by saying thank you but I, I would like before we leave for each of you if you have any advice for students that are looking at Cornell or ROTC or ROTC at Cornell if you have any um, parting or final advice you'd like to share um, would love to have you do that now and then actually we're going to go in reverse order Claudia I will start with you any advice for for those who are, you know, spending a little time in your shoes and, and sort of thinking about what's next for them and what ROTC could mean for them. Absolutely. Well, I found that, especially when you're applying to colleges, considering what you're gonna be doing 10 years into the future, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and stressed, about, stressed out about all of the numbers. So, the biggest piece of advice that I would give is take care of yourself. I know it sounds generic, but please set aside some time to focus on what you want to do, your mental health, and take care of yourself because in the long run, the numbers, they matter, but they don't matter as much as what you really want. So focus on what you want in life, not what other people are telling you that you might want or what you think sounds impressive. Really go for what you enjoy and take some time away to spend time with yourself by yourself and just having fun. That's terrific. Thank you so much. How about you, Shane? Any parting words of wisdom, advice? Sure. Um, just, just to kind of echo what Claudia said, um, really try to follow what your dreams are. Um, college is the time to explore whether that's doing ROTC or not doing ROTC. Um, you'll definitely find something great um, for you at Cornell. And if you're thinking about engineering, um, um, I highly recommend uh, looking into the Air Force or Space Force. There's a lot of really cool jobs that are coming out in that field for you guys to explore. Oh my gosh, that's right. There's Space Force now. We don't even have time to talk about that. And is there going to be a separate ROTC program? <laughs> that's another, another session, another segment. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shane. How about you, Natalia? Any advice, parting words for... Uh, those who are looking at Cornell are looking at ROTC or looking at ROTC at Cornell? Um, first, I'll address looking at Cornell and just college admissions on the whole. Um, apply where, feels, where it feels right and be yourself. That's the most you can do. Um, 
And even if you don't end up where you think you will, it might end up a million times better than you ever could have imagined. Um, if you're thinking about ROTC at Cornell, or if you're already at Cornell and thinking about ROTC, come talk to us, come take a tour of our unit, come later in maybe next semester work out with us, sit down in a class, um, or even join as a college programmer. I, like I mentioned earlier, I hadn't decided coming in whether I was going to be Navy or Army or what I was looking for. So I picked one and I, you know, started going to classes. I signed up as a college programmer, which is an essentially low commitment, unlike being on scholarship where you're, you're promising to join the Navy after. And you get, I got a chance to feel and experience the whole thing. And as I got to know the people, it, it certainly felt like the right fit for me, hmm. but I, I know that nothing, nothing I say could give you as good a feel for it as coming to try it for yourself. And we'd love to show you around. That's great. Thank you, Natalia. Colby, what about you? Advice for our friends who are thinking about doing what it is you're already doing. I know the uh, statement, get out of your com comfort zone or become comfortable being uncomfortable is a cliche, but at the end of the day, it's true. And you should take those leaps. You should take those things that seem like these crazy risks, but in the end of the day, they pay off. And while you should keep in mind the big picture and end goal, you need to trust the process and fall in love with it. Love the day to day, love the opportunities in front of you and realize how blessed you are and how blessed we are as Cornell students to have what we have. It, it's really amazing. It's, it's a gift and just trust it and take the leap, go for it. That's terrific. And Amy, I'm gonna have you wrap up for us. Any advice you have I mean, you've, you've had a, a lengthy career because you're graduating, you and, and others are graduating, but um, any advice for students that are thinking about Cornell, ROTC, even the Marine Corps? Yes, so as far as Cornell, I um, would definitely recommend it really to anybody because of the wide range of resources, as Colby mentioned, and also opportunities that there's really something for everybody. Um, so coming from a very small high school, I thought I needed a small college too, but I'm so glad I got out of my comfort zone that way and chose a large school because I wouldn't want, ever wanna be limited by um, there being so few options. So I'm so grateful to be in this place. So I definitely say, take a look at Cornell, um, especially because of the different opportunities and different roads you could go down that you might not ever imagine. And then as far as ROTC, as the um, Navy ROTC recruiting officer um, this year, I always tell the prospective students to, to just talk to somebody and give it a try. As uh, Natalia mentioned, if you just put one foot in the door, you'll get a taste of it. I was also a college programmer at my freshman year, the first week of school I came in, saw a girl in my, um, my class, my freshman writing seminar, she was wearing her khaki uniform. And after class, I asked her, what ROTC was like here because I knew I had an inkling that I wanted to do it um, and right away she took me at the, for a tour in the unit just showed me our lounge and let me talk to some of the other midshipmen and that afternoon I was going on a hike with them and then the next day I had joined so it was very fast and so really you can just say you're interested if you show any demonstrated interest you're fully accepted into the group as one of us and you're able to join and you have no commitment until um, your sophomore year when you decide to actually sign something. Um, and so you don't have any commitment when you first walk into the door. So that's something to always remember. And then for the Marine Corps, um, it's something that I would really challenge anyone to um, step up to this and try to um, try to see if it's something that you'd like to join because it's definitely physically and mentally difficult but i think that you can definitely um, expand your horizons and as colby mentioned you can really lean into that discomfort and see that it's something that you could um, become and become a really great leader and the marine corps is looking for people of all all different kinds and people that might have different strengths so i definitely recommend choosing and looking at all these three different options cornell rtc in general and cornell uh, as a marine option that's terrific. Well, I want to thank you all for being extraordinary representatives of ROTC at Cornell and certainly of your branches. And I want to thank you for being extraordinary leaders 
um, for doing what you do and, and sort of letting folks know and talking about the enjoyment that you get from doing what you do. What, managing, I think, the, uh, the two identities well is not easy. And boy, you guys make it look so easy. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that. It's, it's because you're working hard at it because um, th this opportunity matters, matters to you. It means something um, to and for all of you. Um, thank you again for the time. This is um, hopefully going to be helpful um, to students that are looking at ROTC, looking at Cornell, um, and um, appreciate you guys joining me. My name is Sean Felton. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about admissions and ROTC, you can go to the Cornell ROTC branch websites, or you can go first to the undergraduate admissions office website at admissions.cornell.edu. And we have, we have a way to connect you with all of the branches, the Cornell ROTC branches at Cornell, available at Cornell from our website. Thank you again.